Hello, hello, hello. This is 3D or 2D.com's The 3D Show. It came from the third dimension. As always, I'm your host, Adolf Vega, and with me is... James Tate. Put on your 3D glasses now. 3D glasses not included. And if you're wondering what the 3Ds are in The 3D Show, well, they stand for discussion, debate, and the news. I will not be talking about Disney ruined Star Wars. And or The Base. Or The Base. Or The Beers. But we will probably talk about Avengers. And the Mario. I do hope you enjoyed the show. The show. Get it? Duh. Duh. <laughs> Hello. Hello, and welcome to episode 58 of the 3D Show. We got a few little topics here and there to talk about. Um, so what do you want to talk about first, James? I think um, there was something pretty interesting that was uh, revealed in kind of the Super Bowl ads, and uh, one of them was a new Guardians trailer. Okay, so Super Bowl happened not that long ago, about a week now from recording. We're recording this on February 12th, 2017, and there is a group of Super Bowl ads of 3D movies, and Guardians of the Galaxy was one of them, uh, Ghost in the Shell was another one, uh, Transformers The Last Night was another one, and finally there was um, one for Pirates, The Dead Man Don't Tell Tales. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Avenger, uh, Avengers, um, Guardians looks fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and and specifically, you can kind of tell that this, like, just from the the trailer, that there's going to be a much bigger kind of team. Yes. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Um, you see, um, Mantis is named for the first time in the trailer, and uh, Zandu. Yeah. So Zandu so. was in the first one as like the father figure uh, slash yeah. you know for um paul was it quinn yeah um anyway so it looks like he's gonna be a regular team member too so you know at the very end you can tell that the you know it's a bigger scope of the guardians yeah. and um i don't know if you heard but like in early screenings um this actually got 100 percent and wow um, you mean like people who have already seen the film? Yes. Um, so they do early screenings, and obviously they, you know, because this is a big movie, um, they have um, screened it with like the family members of the movie people, and you know, different executives, top level stuff. But they do this for several movies, you know, and the fact that it got a hundred percent is incredibly rare. Like it's yeah. And that's going to be a really good sign, considering that, first of all, b both of us were kind of hesitant on it before it came out. And when it came out, both of us really liked it. So, yeah. you know, I think it was a huge movie before, and it might be a, probably the first really huge movie of 2017, maybe, you know? Yeah, and, and the thing is, is that um, we were both like kind of, uh, I don't know about this one. It looked a lot like, the from the first teaser or whatever, it looked a lot like... Um, the uh, the first film kind of uh, point five. Yeah, it didn't really look like a two, you know. Yeah, but now it's starting to really look like its own film. So it looks a lot of fun, and um, you know, I think they really the first one really worked, which is just kind of surprising in itself. And this one, they just hit the ground running, and it looks like it's going to be a great movie. So, so the next movie, uh, Ghost in the Shell. Um, that, that trailer was a little bit of nothing. It was like, you know, you get to see Scarlet in her, I guess, the naked costume, and that's basically it. Yeah. It was okay. It was interesting, but it was like literally a 30 second ad. There's nothing there. You know, it's interesting visuals, you know, so we'll see how that works out. Anything yeah. Anything else you want to mention about that one? Or no, no, um, I'm just, uh, looking kind of forward to it. And then we got, um, Pirates, um, Dead Man, Don't Tell Tales, or, yeah. Now, I heard that we will see the, the, um, th there's gonna be, like, a return of, like, the, the Will character mm -hmm. in this film. I don't know. It and, looks visually cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's kind of, um, interesting, I guess. Yeah, um, you know, at the very end, you finally do see Jack Sparrow. So, you know, 
It's kind of one of those things where if you have dead people come back to life, then what is the point of death? You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's one of those weird things. I haven't seen – I saw the first one only. Well, I think the fourth, third one, I don't even know. I lost track of them. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's just whatever. It's not to be ta- – I don't know. It's okay movies. Yeah, uh, they're, they're just uh, okay, you know. And, and you know what's what's surprising is that Disney has tried to make other films based on their rides, and they've never gone well. This is the only film that's gone okay. I like Tomorrowland. I like it a lot. It's fun, but it flopped hard. <laughs> you mean Tomorrowland? Yeah. Yeah. Did you watch that or no? No. I like it. I like it. It's interesting. Why did it flop? I think it just came out the wrong time. I think oh. it, so it was a really busy time period, and it just kind of, you know, that's the thing. Sometimes it doesn't matter if it's a good movie or not. If it comes out the wrong time, it might just get overshadowed by other stuff that's bigger, you know. But, um, okay, so then we got Transformers, which Transformers is Transformers. You know what you're going to get now. This is the fifth movie. And, yeah. Um, you know, it tried to be all artsy fartsy at the beginning. I was like, oh, whatever, Transformers. <laughs> and then, yeah, you, know, you, you still have no idea what's going on. Something like Optimus said, you know, it looks like he was talking to the cre- his creator or like a, a female voice. Wants revenge or something. I don't understand what's going on though. But whatever, Transformers is Transformers. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, what do you want to talk about next? Um, you know, um, I was thinking that we could uh, talk about the uh, new news about the uh, 3D. Okay. Yes. Um, specifically, um, let's talk about the PS4 update yes. to do 3D Blu-rays. So, yeah. um, you know, VR right now is kind of a weird situation because... There hasn't been, like, a specific VR hit, you know, that's only for VR. You know, there's some games here and there are doing okay. Um, I heard Resident Evil 7 is awesome in VR. Um, but anyway, one interesting thing is that you could watch movies in VR, and you're, like, basically in a movie theater, and, you know, you have a giant screen, and it's supposed to be pretty cool. I haven't experienced it myself, but... Anyway, um, the PS4 update, um, they are giving people the ability to watch 3D Blu-rays on their P- uh, PSVR, and that's pretty cool. Wow. So, you know, 3D Blu-rays, like we said last time, you know, they're going extinct, uh, 3D TVs, so if you could watch your 3D movies in your, you know, VR, then there you go, maybe continue on that way, you know? <laughs> Really expensive yeah. way to continue 3D movies. <laughs> <laughs> really expensive way, yeah. But yeah, it could work. Um, it's neat. It's interesting, and something that Sony, you know, makes total sense for Sony to do. You know. Yeah. You know, they'll advertise their movie coming out in 3D. You buy the 3D Blu-ray. You watch your, you know, Blu-ray on your VR. It all is that. Um, I forget what that term is. The convergence, and you know, whatever. So, yeah, um, kind of speaking about video games, we got a lot of talk back and forth about a 3DS successor beyond the new 3DS. So, this is just a lot of noise. Um, it's kind of annoying because you see it online. It's a lot of clickbaiting news articles because the, you know, the president of Nintendo did mention this. So, whenever the president of a company says something, it is news. But you got to kind of read through the, you know, actual facts and kind of get what they're trying to say. And he was just kind of saying that we may need to have a successor because, you know, the market is still there. And but they didn't say that we're going to make a successor and like maybe things are last lost in translation. And it just kind of the way I figure is what I say. I think I said this a hundred times or probably already. That Nintendo is a smart business. As much yes, as, they're very smart. As much as we get frustrated with some of their decisions, they've been around for a hundred years. They know how to do their business. 
And a thing about business is you got to always plan for the next step, even if yeah. you don't know what's going to happen. You know, if the Switch is a bomb, which I don't think it, it will be, it probably won't be as big as a Wii, but we'll see. Um, you know, they got to hope that the next version of the, you know, 3DS is coming out because if people are buying the new 3DS, you know, by like five to one to Switch, then who do you bet on? You know, do you bet on us try to get Switch going or do you just do, you do another 3DS? Or is it just another system entirely? And so they're always working on something. But I don't think anything's going to happen right now. If anything, I think the new 3DS is going to get more traction by Nintendo. And like I said before in the predictions, the, the 3DS is going to go lower in price. And we're probably going to get a new 2DS because a lot of sales there. And that way it will expand. You know, Nintendo could feel more comfortable about having, you know, new 3DS exclusive or new 2DS exclusive games because more people have it, you know. So I'm thinking that the 3DS probably has more time than we probably think just because they're, you know, they don't want to go all into a Switch because a lot of people complain that it's expensive. And I agree, it is expensive. $300 for the Switch without a game. And the games are still 60 bucks, you know, each. And... The controllers are like 80, you know, it's really expensive, so, and it's not necessarily a portable, you can't really put the Switch in your pocket from what I hear, because it's like a six and a half inch screen, and it's just too big, you know, you can't put an iPad mini in your yeah. pocket, so, you know, it's going to be different people to be able to play the Switch versus different people that can play the 3DS, so, yeah, yeah. what do you think, what do you think? Well, I mean... We can tell kind of that with the Switch coming out that Nintendo is obviously, as you said before, it's it's planning for the future. And I think that the Switch was a very kind of economic idea, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm not – it's just kind of noise. It's just, yeah, we're thinking about it, but we're not really thinking about it. You should buy our product now. (laughs) Yeah. Don't buy our – wait for our product in the future, you know, and it's just – there's a lot of things that Nintendo has uh, made that or thought about making and it never actually comes to be, you know. Is yeah. a, a lot of cancelled projects, a lot of uh systems that did never came to be, you know. Yeah, and I mean uh maybe they'll maybe they will make a new three D S. New new three D S. A new new three D S. <laughs> well, if you ask me, I would call it three D S two. Uh two point oh. 2.0 60th DS <laughs> or 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 call it um uh Nintendo 3DS 64 <laughs> ultra super <laughs> but yeah I, i'm thinking next year 2018 we'll probably start get if not this year more new 3DS exclusive games and No if you, well I mean if you ask me I don't see why they would kill the 3DS line to be honest as different people going to have you know certain people are not going to have both and certain people are going to keep going you know Yeah like I wouldn't necessarily I'm not a parent but I wouldn't necessarily trust my 7 year old child if I had a 7 year old with $300 switch you know Yeah People do that with iPads, but they usually do that because they got a new one, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things where the kids usually get the, you know, I'm upgrading, you get the old one. Yeah. Live with it. But the, uh, not many people actively buy new, you know, $400 devices for their kids. Yeah. You know, so we'll see, we'll see. But I'm not, it's just noise, just you know, clickbaity, you know, it's nothing really going to happen. We'll see if anything does happen, but just noise. Just the clickbait garbage that I really can't stand. That is Nintendo going to have a new new 3DS? It's like, oh, shut up. <laughs> That's not how this works, you know? <laughs> so let's keep going with the video game stuff. We got some uh, Switch VR stuff. So this is, again, that kind of noise. People talked about it, and like, Ooh, maybe you could use like a, you know, how like you use a phone VR 
and you know use that with use the Switch gamepad with that. But the Switch gamepad is huge; it's six inches, so it's kind of bigger than most of the phone VR things. You know, the Samsung VR, the you know that you put to your head with your phone, with your Galaxy phone or whatever. But um, Nintendo didn't confirm anything with this during the press, you know, thing in January. And Nintendo did say, oh, yeah, we're looking into it, you know. But I think it's more or less just because they don't want to say no. You know, VR is talked about. I don't know how popular sales-wise it is. I don't think it's that popular, but it's one of those things that people are talking about. And it may be that Switch isn't powerful enough to do VR. The screen is 720p. And most VR, you know, they really need at least 1080p, if not, you know, 4K, you know. Yeah. And the processing of VR is a lot, you know. People complain that the PS4 uh, VR is kind of weak. And, you know, the the basic VR you get on the phones is not the same kind of quality VR that you get from Oculus Rift, you know. Yeah. So it may be in the future if VR is a big hit, you know, you could buy a new Switch that you just plug in. Maybe four years from now, new Switch will have VR abilities, you know, maybe not this version, you know, kind of thing. And you just swap out the Switch unit, not the actual, you know, controllers and everything else. Yeah. I don't know. Do you want to see Nintendo go back into VR? You know, um, I heard, okay, this is what I heard about Nintendo and VR. And it's funny that you say back because you're counting the virtual boy, I would think. Mm-hmm. It leaves your eyes. Virtual boy, see it now in 3D. <laughs> so, um, the, Nintendo has has made a statement about how in all the VR that they have seen, it's been focused on your personal experience and not playing with others. They have said that if they design their own virtual reality, they would focus on making multiplayer games, which would be really weird. Yeah, that's interesting to know. Could could you could you imagine that? Yeah, I guess like Splatoon would be cool in VR. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Splatoon. And and what's funny is that about Splatoon is that as I said, as as I said, I mean, I wasn't completely right, but Splatoon 2 is coming out this year. Yeah. So, I was half right kind of. Yeah, the little Joy-Con, you know, uh, game controllers, that would be kind of cool for using it in uh, virtual reality. Yeah. You know, ARMS is kind of like that. You know, they're still using motion controls, you know, so, uh, you know, it's, we'll see. I'm, I'm not optimistic on that. I'm not going to bet that right now. But, yeah. Continuing yeah. on with VR, Best Buy recently did uh, actually cut down the amount of stores that have VR displays, which is like, does that mean that Best Buy, you know, is going to, that VR is a failure, that mean that, you know, Best Buy is not going to be supporting it? Because that's, you know, where I got to play the PSVR, you know, last year was the Best Buy. I think just because Best Buy as a store itself is struggling now, it's I don't think it's that much a indicator that VR is a total failure. But it's a, it's an interesting sign, first sign, you know? What do you yeah, think? Yeah, this could mean a lot of things, though. I'm not necessarily thinking that it means that VR is going to be going downhill or something because I think that VR when even when it was first made was always viewed at as this is a console that not a lot of people will have but the people who do buy it will get a lot of money from. Mhm. Because really you look at it, it's a very expensive console. Oh yeah. I mean all VR, you know, not just for PlayStation VR, it's for Oculus and everything else that they may have. And Best Buy, you know. So, so I, I mean, I, I'm just maybe thinking that it's maybe a little bit too expensive to have a display in every store. I think it maybe might just be that simple. They're looking for uh, odds and ends to cut to save money. Yeah, and I think also part of it is the normal 
spring, you know, to fall season. They want different stuff in the store to highlight, you know. Yeah, and 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 you know, speaking about stuff that uh, I, I was actually going to a Best Buy, and they were taking down the uh, Wii Wii U, mm. um, and they were putting a like the Switch thing in its place, and they weren't putting a Switch console, but they were putting like a sign up that said that the Switch would come out in March, and I'm like, you know, that's when it kind of hit me that you know we're moving we're moving to a different console, and it's all going by so fast to me. Yeah, it is interesting, you know. Nintendo is letting, you know, let the Wii U die a horrible death. <laughs> you know. I, I think it was, they've been more cruel to the Wii U than the than the GameCube. Yeah, it just... I yeah. Guess, we'll see what happens, but it's, it's some of that, like you're right, you know, it's getting to the next thing. And the mm-hmm. next thing, you know, may be something else that they want to advertise. Yep. Maybe, you know... Because, you know, tax season's happening soon, so maybe that's part of it. Maybe they're like, okay, maybe people will get a tax return and they want to buy appliances. So let's highlight that. You know, that's regular standard kind of retail kind of setup, you know, to see what is the best for that season. So maybe, yeah. it's just, you know, it's I don't. It's interesting to take note of. We'll see if it leads to anything, but it's about half-half, you know? The 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 stores are only as big as they could get. They're not going to make them any bigger. So you have to see what comes in and what leaves, you know? Yeah. Like their DVD and Blu-ray section is like half as it was like five years ago, you know? So. It's true. They have cut down a lot on their their DVD and movie sections, which is sad. Yeah. It's it's kind of a weird thing that it looks like a lot of people are, um, you know, I understand it completely. I do love watching movies on Netflix and digitally, but it looks like a lot of people are just like, eh, I don't really care about owning Blu-rays anymore or DVDs ever at all. And I, I get it to a degree. I don't, you know, I have this giant shelf of movies and it's kind of a pain when you move, <laughs> you know, yeah. but at the same time, the quality is so, cons- so much better uh, than streaming you know, even yeah. if, if you have the best quality streaming. Well, and, and I mean, like, there's some films where you almost need to, to watch it in, like, a better quality. Like Avatar, you know? Yeah. I would never watch Avatar in any less quality than Blu-ray. Yeah. And, you know, it's just part of that nature is, you know, the 3D movies on, you know, 3D Blu-rays, you know, 3D Blu-rays and Blu-rays in general are going, you know, they're they're starting the 4K Blu-ray, you know, and the 4K Blu-rays are, you know, you're getting to a point where I think a lot of people jumped on DVD because DVD was such a obvious better than VHS. But from Blu-ray to DVD, it was noticeable and better, but it wasn't like... A lot of people care that much, you know, people that really care, the people yeah, that really, yeah. you know, like, I'm not going to rebuy movies on 4K, you know, I bought, I rebought some Blu-rays that I had of DVDs, but I'm not going to do that again, you know, especially since a lot of the conversions and stuff, you know, but 4K may work better for 3D movies if they made them, which I don't know if they're making 4K Blu-ray 3D, but we'll see. But, yeah, it looks like the collectors, you know, a lot of the people that are collecting movies, maybe they're right. Because the thing with Netflix and Amazon and everything is that those deals to have those movies up eventually go away. So, you know, that every month movies get off of Netflix and Amazon, you know, that and some of them may not appear again, you know. Some of them, you know, you may need to buy the DVD or else it will be gone in time, you know? Anyway, let's keep going yeah. here. Um, so we got some news on the Batman. The uh, the Batman movie will unfortunately not be directed by Ben Affleck. So uh, it's going to be – it looks like – Warner Brothers hasn't officially said this, but – Verity has said that they're con- considering this. So Verity is probably one of the best sources of entertainment news, period. 
So they are thinking that it's going to be Matt Reeves. Now, Matt Reeves um, has some experience, um, and I actually do like what he has done. Um, do you know, have you heard of Matt Reeves? Uh, no. Uh, just you, you, Could you just name a couple films I'll know? He helped with, uh, he helped direct uh, Cloverfield with J.J. Abrams. Oh, okay. And he helped make the 2010 movie uh, Let Me In, and Dawn and War for the Planet of the Apes, which I love, that the Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. So I think it's good hands that you're going to, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I think it could work. You know, people are like, oh, give it to Snyder. Like, no, I don't want Snyder to touch Batman. <laughs> 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 what? You don't, <laughs> you don't want the Snyder touching Batman? No, I mean, okay, look, I can't. I've defended Snyder. I like a lot of things he does, but he, he can't have his hands in everything, you know? I think I'm yeah. pretty curious how Wonder Woman's going to be, because that's the first DC movie that is not Snyder directly attached to. Yeah. You know? So, Batman vs. Superman, and Superman, and Man of Steel, you know, and well, Suicide Squad was not really touched by them, but a lot of executives, you know. So, I think Matt Reeves is a really good um, person to have this on, you know. Maybe, but I, who knows, do you think that might change the uh, the general critical opinion of the DC films? Who knows? Yeah, it is interesting because, you know, Affleck has done this before. I don't know if you've seen Argo. He did direct, star, and write Argo, and he won an Oscar for it. And I think Argo is fantastic. Um, have you seen it? No. So Argo is a fake story. It's kind of a, a kind of funny. Of uh, a, so apparently President Carter um, trying to get the Iranian hostages out, and the way that he tried to do it was that he hired Hollywood executives to film a movie in Iran and then try to get the hostages that way. And so it was a fake movie. They weren't really filming a movie. It was an excuse to get into Iran to help the people get out. And people didn't know about this until, you know, years after. And the movie itself, you know, the climax of the movie is them going to the airport through screening, which sounds incredibly boring. But when you're actually watching it, it's so exciting. And it's so well done, so well acted. I, you know, Argo is, is fantastic. It's people that people don't watch that movie. A lot of people I know have never seen it, and it's so well done. It's so exciting and thrilling and interesting and funny, and you know, it's a good story. So it's sad that he can't do this. He said that um, Affleck said that he's just kind of worried about the stress of having Batman. You know, everyone loves Batman. Uh, you know, or not everyone, but I mean, a lot of people love Batman movies and batman as a character so it's an added pressure to making a movie with this, such a popular character and that's basically he's just worried that he's gonna mess up so i guess you kind of respect him for that you know well and i mean come on the the dc films so far have always been disaster so i don't understand <laughs> critically at least so yeah. i don't see what's the what's the but yeah i can get him so it's Hey, if, if it's too much pressure, you know, maybe get someone else that, that can help. But he is going to be like a major part of it, so it's going to be kind of a one of those things where it's like, yeah, I'm really directing it, but uh, you're not, you know, one of those things where okay, like this, do this, you know. So I don't know if that person Matt Reeves is going to like being micromanaged, you know, because that may be one of those things where he's there to handle some of the pressure, but not, you know, some of the probably pain and not <laughs> of movie making and not, you know, cause he's, he said, Affleck said that he's de definitely going to be producing this and writing this and starring on it. So he definitely has his hands in it. So we'll see, you know, so let's go on to our last topic and, um, talking about superheroes Avengers Infinity War. We got some really fun news with that. Yeah, uh, so we kind of, and this is kind of interesting because we have never really gotten something like this from the Marvel Cinematic Universe to my knowledge. And 
it was sort of like a sneak preview with no footage from the actual film. And all it's talking about is like over some concept art and like commentary about what the cinematic universe has been leading up to. It's not really, it's, it's a very weird kind of teaser for, I don't know if you, you saw it, right? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. And so, you know, you kind of get the, all these things confirmed that, you know, um, the Avengers will be with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Spider-Man will be there. You know, it, it's really cool. Um, you kind of get some concept art of Rocket Raccoon and Thor. So um, that was cool. And then one thing that was kind of um, cool about this is that in the in, and this is a recent. This is this came out in February. They said the next two films. They're t- so it will be two films, which. For a long time, people thought the Avengers 3 will just be one film. Yeah, so that's going to be interesting to see how that works out. You know, was that a slip of the tongue, or was that intentional? Was it, you know, is it really going to be independent movies, or is it going to be con- to be continued, you know? Because, you know, you know, MCU stuff, you know, maybe it's one of those things where you get a somewhat happy ending, but maybe not, you know? And then other stuff fills in the details, and then you get the real movie, Sec- Seek Part 2. It's not really Part 2. You know what I mean? Like, it looks like everything yeah. wraps up, and it the characters assume everything wraps up, but then, you know, something happens, and then you have in between there one movie, two movies, and, like, some Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in there, and they're like, wait, there's more. Yeah, and, you know, and that's then that's kind of what I'm thinking is going to happen. That seems like the smarter way of doing it than just doing, you know, fade to black to be continued, and then oh my god, you have to wait a year and a half. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, or is it, you know, like the Lord of the Rings movies, they're essentially self-contained to a degree. You know. Uh huh. You know, Harry Potter movies, they are essentially self-contained, but they're a bigger story arc. Harry Potter is probably a really better example than Lord of the Rings because yeah. Twin Towers does not hold up by itself. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's still a good movie. It's just saying it's so dependent on everything that happened in the first one. But the Harry Potter movies are all standalone movies. You still move from one story from another. But, you know, it's interesting to see. And, I, I, you know, one of those things, I can't wait to see how Iron Man reacts to Rocket Raccoon, you know? Yeah. It, and it'll be, it'll be kind of interesting, because, like, the Guardians of the Galaxy and the Avengers are very different teams. Yeah, and then, of course, having Spider-Man there, you know, he just got started coming back, and he's going to have his own movie, and then, boom. <laughs> you know, going yeah. out of space. <laughs> Of course, being outer space, it does make things super easy for Symbiote and Carnage and, you know. Yeah. You know, because that is the canon now, I think, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, Symbiote being, you know, the Venom being from another planet, you know. So that would be a fun way to introduce that, you know, have that there. But, yeah, um, it's... You know, the starting to have the new year really get going, and you know, um, we'll s- we haven't had another Nintendo Direct in a while. I'm guessing another one's going to happen soon, but um, you know, we should be getting the Pikmin information soon, and you know, Mario is coming out soon, the sports game. So, and um, it looks like Lego Batman may have won the weekend and beaten Fifty Shades Darker um, at the box office, though. So. Lego Batman, <laughs> which is insane. Which is really funny when you think about it. Is that a, uh, the Lego Batman movie beat the BDSM film? Yeah, um, it's the numbers are going up and down. You know, I, we're as I'm recording this, I don't think the final numbers of the weekend have come up yet. But I think it's like within ten to fifteen million. But yeah, um, Lego Batman. It looks okay. It looks fine. Um, I'm not. I'll, I'll I'll rent that from Redbox. You know, I don't need to go out of the theater for that. But um, interesting note though, Resident Evil seems to be flopping hard here. 
Um, you know, Resident Evil Seven, the final chapter, or not seven? Is it the seventh movie? I don't even know anymore. I think it's the sixth. Six. Uh, um, the final chapter is bombing. You know, so it like started number three, and you know, I think it really will be the final chapter. <laughs> Obviously, foreign box office is a big part of uh, that, but yeah, I, I I really think that they're done. You know, if they're going to do another Resident Evil movie, it'll probably be like in two or three years, and it will restart it again from the beginning, you know? Yeah, and hopefully make it more like what people actually wanted it to be. Yeah, you know, I would actually like if it was a um, kind of like Deadpool breaking the fourth wall and be self-aware of how ridiculous it is, you know? <laughs> yeah. Because, like, I don't know how much of the Resident Evil... Um, first game was intentionally funny, but it was really funny with the master of unlocking and all this really corny dialogue. We should start from the first floor, okay? And, Jill, here's a lockpick. It might be handy if you, the master of unlocking, take it with you. Thanks. Maybe I'll need it. You know, it yeah. kind of seemed like a really cheesy horror movie. So to be part of that again, you know, to really be obviously aware of how, you know, you know that could be interesting. There's a, a kind of a thing like that that happens in, you know, Final Chapter, which I'm about to post a review for it soon. But um, they find like a big backpack full of weapons. And it's like, what? They just find a cache right there. Oh, look at that. How convenient. And then it flashes back to like the first movie. And I was like, No. That doesn't make sense. But, like, they could have played that off and winked to the camera and be like, hey, you know, how convenient. There's a big bag of weapons right here to help us out, you know? Mm -hmm. But they don't yeah. do that. And that would have been funny. That would have worked, you know, to have that. You know, they could have said, oh, look, there's a green herb here. If you eat it, it makes you feel better, <laughs> you know? Just to be funny. Um, but they didn't. And I think that would be a fun way to continue the Resident Evil horror movie franchise is to play it up, you know, for laughs and know that it's kind of weird. And Yeah, and, and I think that that's the reason why Marvel movies are, are superhero films, like specifically Marvel ones have been so successful is because, you know, while they are serious, they also kind of embrace the sillier aspects and, and um, you know, they have fun with it. But, you know... Generally, video game movies try to be really serious. All right. Well, um, that's going to be basically it for this time. Um, we're going to keep coming every two or three weeks, depending on news, you know. And um, see you next time. Later. Bye. All right. So that's going to wrap up this podcast. Remember to like, comment, favorite, subscribe, love whatever, heart it, be something. 3D or 2D.com can be found on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, and SoundCloud. And if you want to send us email, our email address is email 3D or 2D at gmail.com. And thank you again for listening. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everyone.